A lot of Georgian people sing, actually. They're not professional singers, but they sing. <laughs> Tbilisi is 6,000 kilometers from Detroit, 3,500 kilometers from London, and 1,700 kilometers from Warsaw. So how did this happen? We didn't really know what to expect, but we wanted to come here for some time now. We wanted to meet the creative people, experience the booming scene, and check the underground spots, and do it all while it's still original and authentic. Because when it comes to techno culture, Georgia's golden era is happening right now. But who knows how long it's gonna last. Everybody starting to listen to techno or like minimal or house or whatever, you know. Everybody goes to club, everybody. Clubbing such a quickly became a big part of life for many, many people. We started wondering, how was all this possible only a few years after the war? For 25 years we were uh, fighting for our freedom and now we are starting to build country from the beginning. It went really fast and a lot of people got interested into electronic music and they found peace inside, like uh, they had a place where they could get lost, they could forget about things that are going outside because we had so many problems at the time, even now. But this is a place where you can be whatever you want to be, so. As Georgians are pretty emotional people, I think um, uh, the club became a kind of good space for young and ages of all people, good place to express their emotion. <laughs> But Georgia's vibe is about much more than just clubbing. And whether it's streetwear, street art, or skateboarding, there's always some of this unique Georgian flavor included. All the guys here and all the other skaters are doing many different stuff too. Like some are DJs, some are filming. I mean, some are painting, some are singing. I don't know, They're doing a bunch of stuff. And all those activities kind of bring even more people together. I like this one. This is a traveler's pancake house. This is the weed that we were smoking was called Bilbao Critical and Pirate Pangas is uh, small pirate boats. Okay, that's it. <laughs> this room was my grandfather's working room in Soviet Union ages, I think. At the school you will learn the basics uh, of DJing, uh, how to mix the vinyls, how to mix the CDs, what is mixture. This is the bridge which has been built in the uh, 80s. When we found this place it has no electricity or and canalization or anything, so it was empty space basically. We plan to open our exhibition area on the third floor, we will show you later. You can walk inside and you are going to uh, another part of the river, another side of the bridge. So it's really sick. It's just gonna be a space for some installations, exhibitions and that kind of stuff also with the lights, with the lights and everything. So we are basically under the bridge? Yes. This is crazy shit. Yeah, it is, it is. Before the club, it was the old uh, restaurant. Uh, it was built in the uh, 50s. We are uh, open for five years and uh, we still have a very big crowd and uh, this crowd is um, getting bigger and bigger. 
Cafe Gallery is the oldest uh, club that uh, still exists. I mean, now uh, the tenth year started that this club exists. It's very, very interesting when you are sitting here in the cafe and at uh, 11 o'clock everything it's transforming into the club in every uh, night. It's just so important, Fabrica just changed this whole like beat of Tbilisi, I think, and uh, yeah, it's just. Again, from like experiences abroad, what can be done when you socialize, when you collaborate, and yeah, it was a little bit like a dream that actually came true. Welcome to CES. We started six years ago, and we had one single studio, which was 40 square meters in a different location and we had 11 students and six years on uh, we have 900 graduates already and at the moment we have more than 200 students enrolled. Okay, so this is our DJ studio. As you can see, it's always very loud in here. Now we have students practicing. We're really promising, yeah. You should have seen us like six years ago. <laughs> But unfortunately, not everyone was able to adapt to the new, rapidly evolving Georgia. Some of them lived in Soviet time, and they had these rules to follow to be happy. And whenever they see someone out of those rules and laws, they kind of get depressed, and they kind of get scared that they're gonna get hurt too. It's sad for me to think that some people think like that, but on, this, on the other hand, I cannot Just change it. They had to change their like, way of living, way of understanding stuff and coping with like n new ways uh, really drastically. And it was, uh, in a lot of examples, it was very, very difficult. Some people just couldn't adjust to, to that ways, and they're still like, when you look at them, you think it's 90s or, you know, and they're, they're not happy. I also had an issue with my father. He didn't like that I was teaching, that I was going out at night. I was not at home and he felt like this you are a girl and you don't have to do this and you have to have a normal job, like normal office job and uh, it's not acceptable for you to be a DJ. Now he's getting used to it and he's like, oh, I like it, I will support that. It's breaking this conventional point of view, how do you have to be to be accepted by the society. And this is, I think, the, the best thing to do for the kids, to say, okay, you are not wrong in your thinking, actually, go ahead. You can be an individual because this society is fighting against the individuals very much. And this is a huge problem. Young generation, they, uh, they living at their time, I'm understanding them and they want to uh, change everything so fast and it's a big process, it needs time. I quite like the traditions that were um, in the past and uh, these traditions also have to be renewed and um, I really like the tradition of family in Georgia uh, because it, family comes first in Georgia. My hope, like main hope in Georgia is this new generation who doesn't care about things. They don't even know the existence of things and problems that we've had. And that's why they take it so easy. So I think I'm very hopeful when I look at this uh, youth and I think they're pretty much who are the face of this country today. Well, you cannot say what happens in a few years, but I don't really want to move from here because I'm really thankful for this place, even if there's such a big problems. When I see where passion 
when I see where motivation for what way you are doing, it really gives me hope and really gives me so much energy. I'm proud because my country has really huge culture and history. Wherever I go, I take my culture with me, so that's the proudness which I own. Yeah. We have Georgian typography, which is beautiful and attractive. And, yeah, that's the, one of the greatest things which we actually own. Yeah. This is the world treasure from my point of view. I don't like the guys who are always think about living abroad. If they don't like it, then do something to change it and it becomes something that you like it. In your family or with your friends, you always try to help someone out if they got some problems. Because mostly in Europe, it's like everyone's got their own life. Yeah, I think that we're kind of all together all the time. We realized that we discovered the scene in a unique moment. Right when everything was happening here and now, just before going mainstream. It's an absurd, sur most surrealistic country, but it's very, very <laughs> subjective, in my opinion. Uh, with a flair of magic all the time. It's absolutely non-logical, nothing is logical here. We are living in a, in a right time here in Georgia, because it's like happening everything now, movies or music, everything is connected with art or something like that. It's still developing, it's like 90s in New York. Everything is starting now and it's pretty pure. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not because of the pose or because of the it's trendy or something like that. If you find the place where can you, you can put your soul out, well then you're happy and then, uh, yeah. I think this is more important. This is what I'm telling the kids, so. Find something for your soul. It's never boring, but sometimes like this whole madness gets on your nerves and sometimes you just want to stay alone and do your thing because all these other worlds are coming to your world all the time but uh, even though this happens it still stay, stays beautiful and somehow it gets really personal to everyone who lives here and uh, whenever you go out you start to miss this like miss this flow which Georgia has I think it's all a dance, it's like there's this constant rhythm and you just dance to it. Sometimes you dance by moving through the city, sometimes you dance by um, making this clothing like your church that you wear or something or, or making music or painting and, or doing like I think every aspect of uh, this reality it's uh, like a big, big dance.